Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members. <clears throat> I'm here in support of uh, Senate Bill 8 1803, and, but with hopes that uh, this committee will see fit to uh, make some changes to it. Uh, I'd like to commend the the, uh, the working group uh, that was assembled by Senator Huffman and then all the uh, stakeholders that were also involved uh, in, the, in the process. I'll be the first one to tell you that it's come a long ways, but it still, in my opinion, falls rather short. And, uh, and it falls rather short when it comes to the actual, at the end of the day, uh, in due process. Now, this committee has already voted out a, a, uh, a bill it was real narrow in scope by Representative uh, Bobby Garrett, and I think it had about 16, uh, had five co-authors, 16 total uh, co-sponsors on the legislation, had a broad cross-section of, of the membership of this House. And uh, it, that was very impressive because I think those members saw that there was a need to have due process uh, for, the, uh, for the providers. One of the things that that's really important and that we have to take into account that when the, when the process is all said and done and the allegations have been made and you start going through the process and, uh, and you'll probably hear testimony tonight that some of these cases have lingered on for four to seven to eight, ten years. I think the state is better served if we have a process that is expedient, a process that allows doctors to have due process, and a process that allows the state that if, in fact, a provider is, is defrauding the system, that they uh, deal with it expeditiously and that those individuals be dealt with accordingly. Where the bill falls short is that, that on the, we have two, two various situations. You have what is known as a payment hold, which obviously the minute that a doctor box at, at, uh, that the agency coming in to start looking at, at the records or whatnot, they immediately put a payment hold on, on your money. And the, but that's okay. The doctors can live with that because they'll live to fight for that money. It's not being taken away from them. It's just being held in, in hold. But what happens after that is that they use that payment hold then to extrapolate and to go back and put you in an overpayment hearing. And so the bill addresses the, the statute of limitations. They can go back five years. So if they, you start out with a with a minimal uh, uh, discrepancy after they they do their modeling and they and you come up with say out of the 100 or 85 files that they look at and they find that there is a problem with a 40 uh, percent of them. So you start out with a fine of fifty thousand dollars, and then they go back and extrapolate and apply that that 40 percent error that you had, whether it was coding, whether it was you checked the wrong box or whatever, and they say, oh by the way. Uh, you don't owe us the $50,000, but you also owe us now $3 million because we're applying that to every case that you've had for the last five years. So we're no longer looking at $50,000. We're looking at millions of dollars. And then they'll tell you, and by the way, we're not through with you because we get to apply. It's the only place where they can provide the standard because not even the Supreme Court has ever allowed the triple damages doctrine. Well, now they get to hit you double. So now you're, now you're staring at 6 to $9 million. But we're not through with you. We want to go ahead and start. We also want to apply to you all the charges, what it took us to do the investigation and everything that brings us to this point. So now you owe us maybe $9.5 million. So we're not talking that there is a concern or a problem or something administratively, which is when the system was set up. We're now talking about professionals, and we're talking about their not only their livelihood, but we're also talking about about their about everything that they've accumulated over the, over the years due to their practice. So we have a system that sets up that allows you now to go to SOA, but at the end of the day, SOA doesn't decide the case. SOA only, only issues a proposal for decision by HAC who brought the, the, the charges. So here you are facing with a possibility of a $9 million judgment, and the only thing you can protect as a doctor is your homestead. Only your homestead. And I think it stands to reason that you ought to at least be able to, uh, to, to appeal to a district court and to be heard in district court by a jury, to have a jury trial. Now, initially there was concern about 
that the the fiscal note on the on doing allowing doctors providers to go through the administrative process and to go to district court that uh, they came up with a sum of three million dollars plus and so there was some pushback in that uh, that they felt that the fiscal note was was too much uh, but you know I mean what's the price that we pay to have due process and liberties and for you to have your day in court but to but to the workings of to this committee and to his chairman they were able to locate the money and had commitments to to provide the dollars hopefully to ensure that doctors in this state have the opportunity to appeal to district court the same that we provide to other agencies in this state already starting from the TCQ to the general land office and others so it only stood the reason that we ought to allow our medical professionals in this state that same opportunity but now it appears that it's not about the money there's absolutely obviously there's concern as to whether or not we should allow doctors to have due process and to appeal so I suggest to you that maybe if, the, if there's concern because you're having to start all over because if you go to from SOA and then the, and the findings you don't like you as a professional who's fixing to get a, you get a judgment for nine or ten million dollars and you'll hear from cases tonight that we're looking at fifteen and twenty million dollar judgments so if the only thing you can protect is your homestead and everything else goes out the window conceivably and you not to have the right to go to a jury trial in my opinion is just totally un-Texan and totally un-American I just cannot believe that we would not give doctors or anybody the opportunity to have a jury trial now so if the problem is with the money now understand that in 1803 we're now we're sharing the cost if the question is about the money and because you go to SOA then you then you're going to start all over then why don't we do this why don't we let let the provider decide whether he wants to go to SOA or immediately go to the to district court to have a jury trial as to whether or not he is guilty of the allegations that are being made if we're really concerned about the cost and because we're going to start over and, and we're, we're afraid of this doctrine that allows doctors to have a fair shot with the jury then why don't we allow the doctors to have the option the providers to have the option to go whether to go to SOA or to or to go to uh, or to go to district court immediately so that we don't have to then have one hearing you don't like the outcome and then you go appeal so why don't we just cut to the chase and at least let the doctors who stand to lose everything besides being bankrupt and everything else, but to lose all their assets, I think it's just wrong without them having the opportunity to have a jury trial. And remember in the process, I think this is a working process. I think that I commend uh, uh, Chairman Cohorse and also Senator Huffman's office because there's been a lot of discussions with both of those offices. And, uh, and I'm hopeful that at the end of the day we can come up with a solution that can satisfy everybody, but it's not about the money. That's clear. But uh, and if it is about the money, then we can, obviously the money's there. But I think it's more about whether or not doctors are going to be entitled, providers in this state are going to be allowed the opportunity to have a jury trial. And I think that's the essence of how this bill can be drastically improved by allowing those providers to have their day in court with a jury trial. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Members, any questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I think right. I failed to recognize them, but I'm Uber Berlanga, and I'm here on behalf of the Texans for a dental reform. All right. Thank you. Thank you.